My name is Lindsay Weiner, and I am an epidemiologist on the methods and analytics team I'm here at CDC. And I am going to be talking to you today about analyzing antimicrobial resistance data in NHSN. So you're going to hear from a few of my colleagues a little later on this morning about the antimicrobial use and resistance module. But before we get into that, I'm going to talk to you about how you can analyze the resistance data from the HAIs that you're already entering into NHSM. Okay, so a quick outline. I'll first um, reiterate again about the annual facility survey, show you how you can pull the stewardship questions out, and show you how we um, apply an algorithm to those questions in order to determine whether or not your facility meets all seven of the core elements that Dr. Hicks was talking about. I will then talk about the NHSN analysis output options for antimicrobial resistance, and then we'll cover the unusual susceptibility alerts, and then finally I'll finish with a quick demo of the Patient Safety Atlas, which is a new web platform just released by CDC to um, allow you to view resistance data in your state or across the nation. And then of course the NHSN motto, all screenshots and data used in this presentation are fictitious. Okay, so as you all know, you're all completing an annual facility survey each year. And starting two years ago, we added 12 questions on antibiotic stewardship practices. And these are asked for all facilities in NHSN, acute care, long-term acute care, and inpatient rehab facility. At this time, ambulatory surgery centers are not required to complete these questions. And um, we apply an algorithm to the questions and we're able to determine whether or not the facility is meeting all seven core elements. If you are unsure about these questions when you're filling them out in the survey, um, we do encourage you to consult with our instructions document and I have a link to that instructions at the bottom. Um, you can also consult with an infectious disease pharmacist, a physician, or any stewardship champions that are identified in your facility. We are planning to create a future analysis report in NHSN that will let you see which of the seven elements you're meeting and which ones you aren't based on the survey, and that will probably be coming in another year or so. But I will say that for now, we do have the annual survey line list available. This is available for both groups and facilities. It's found in the advanced folder um, within the subfolder facility level data. And we have line lists available for hospitals, LTACs, ERF, and dialysis clinics. And you can review each answer to each of the survey questions here. You will see a lot of different options for the line lists. And they differ by the date of the survey. So for now, the one you want to use um, hospital survey 2015 and later. We have had some emails um, from people confused about which variables correspond to which question on the survey. And for that, you can consult with the NHSN data dictionary. And I have the link right here underneath the screenshot. Okay, so um, now we've done a little bit more on stewardship. We're going to talk about the analysis reports for antibiotic resistance. Okay, so just hopefully this is all a, a review for you about where you're entering the pathogen and the resistance data into NHSN. So this is at the very bottom of an event form after you enter all the signs and symptoms and the other criteria. You have the option to enter up to three different pathogens for each HAI. And depending on which pathogen you choose, different drugs will be required for you to enter their susceptibilities. So you enter the susceptibility as either, um, it's a category interpretation, so S for sensitive, I for intermediate, R for resistant, or N for not tested. And now I'm going to show you how you can pull these susceptibility data in analysis reports. Okay, so here's an example to help us get started. This is a question we received at the NHSN help desk. I am trying to determine which specific pathogens are common in my facility. How can I review the pathogens that I've entered for all of my CLABSIs? 
Okay, so there are a few ways you can do this. One way is to manually add the pathogen variables to the line list. I'm gonna walk you through step by step how you can do that. Okay, so step one, we're going to find the CLABSI line list under the device associated module folder and click modify. Step two, at the very bottom of the modify screen, there is a link um, that you can click to modify the variables displayed on the line list. Okay, so we're gonna click that modify list. And when you do that, a pop-up box will appear and it will allow you to choose which variables you want to include and which variables you want to remove from the line list. So remember, um, just a few slides ago, I talked about how you can report up to three different pathogens for an HAI. Well, each of those pathogens has a different variable. Okay, so we have pathogen one, pathogen two, and pathogen three. By default, those, those variables will appear under the column on the left that says available variables. You'll want to move them over to the right column under selected variables in order for them to appear on your line list. Now the variables called pathogen one, two, and three are a code. And it's a code used in NHSN, an abbreviation for the pathogen. For example, E. coli will be EC. Now that for some of the pathogens, it may not be as intuitive, so we also recommend that you move over the description variables. They're called pathogen DESC for pathogen description, and it's the full organism name, so you'll see E. coli. So once you move all of those variables over to the right column, um, you're then able to run your line list and view the different pathogens reported. Okay, so here's our example, CLABSI line list output. You can see the red box has the six different variables. The first three are the codes, or the, um, in all capital letters, and then the second three are the full pathogen name. So as you can see for most of these, pathogen two and three are blank, so that just means that there was only one pathogen reported for the HAI. Another way to display the pathogen data that you're entering with your HAIs is to look at a frequency table. Okay, so this will help us answer the question, what types of pathogens were reported in our facility among CAUDIs? Um, so what you can do to answer this question is you find the CAUDI frequency table. Again, this is under the device associated module folder under urinary catheter associated UTI. From there, you go to the frequency table and you click modify. And at the bottom of the modify screen, you see, which is the second screenshot here, you see the option where you can select the row and the column variable. So here for the column variable, I've selected pathogen description one. So I'm going to see the full pathogen name of the first pathogen entered for the HAIs. Okay, now here's our example output. This is a CAUDI frequency table, and you can see that each column represents a different pathogen, and each of the rows represents a different year. So we're able to see how many counts of each pathogen were reported for CAUDIs for each of the years. Okay, now I'm sure naturally you're all asking yourself, are any of these pathogens resistant to key antibiotics? And if you're not asking yourself, you'll have a colleague, maybe a hospital administrator is asking you, you know, what type of resistance patterns are we seeing with our HAIs? And before I get into the nitty gritty details of those reports, I wanted to show you this comic. We have two um, bacterias and at the bottom it says, it was on a shortcut through the hospital kitchen that Albert was first approached by a member of the antibiotic resistance. And you see them with a trench coat and a hat, and he's trying to convince the second bacteria to take some of the DNA. Okay, so there are a few ways you can review the different susceptibilities in NHSN. The easiest way for you to do this is to use the predefined analytic reports that we have created, where CDC has identified 11 important antimicrobial resistance patterns which are also known as phenotypes. So I may be using the word phenotypes throughout the rest of the presentation. 
Um, so CDC has identified 11 of them for these predefined reports. These include things like CRE, carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae, MRSA, VRE, and a few different multi drug resistant phenotypes. We do have documentation available that identifies and defines um, which pathogens and which drugs we used to make up those 11 phenotypes, and that is available at the link at the bottom of the slide. So by default, these analysis reports that I'm about to show you will only pull the HAIs that were reported with one of these 11 resistant phenotypes. Okay, so we have three analysis output options available. We have a line list, a frequency table, and a rate table. Normally, when you're running your reports in NHSN, you're used to running them for one HAI type at a time. Okay, so these work a little bit differently in that they are going to pull from all of the HAI types that you've entered and show you which ones have a resistant phenotype. Okay, um, another thing about these reports, they will include all time periods. So you can run them and it will look, it will search back through all of the HAIs you've entered and return for you any that had one of those 11 resistance profiles. These are also available for groups. So those of you that are in a state health department or a Quinn or QIO, and you're interested in what types of resistance are being seen in the facilities, you also have the option to run these reports. Okay, um, as you're used to with our NHSN reports, you can always click modify in order to select a time period, a phenotype, or an HAI type of interest. Or you can just click run. And I like to say that because these reports are designed to be relatively easy to use um, to the point where you can just click run and it will tell you what resistance patterns you've entered or if any of them are the 11 that we've identified. So first, um, we'll talk about the line list. And in the next example, all I've done is click run for this sample facility. We haven't made any modifications to the report. Okay, so this is what our line list output looks like. So as you can see, we have three different tables. And if you focus on the pink highlighted titles, that tells you which phenotype we're looking at. So the first table on the top is for MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. And then beneath that, we can review the event level details of all of the MRSAs entered. Just to clarify, these are not the MRSA lab ID events that you're entering into the MDRO module. These are MRSAs that are associated with a CLABSI, a CAUDI, an SSI, or a VAE. The second table we have, carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae. And then the third, we have a multi-drug resistant acinetobacter. So because in this line list, we're only seeing three different phenotypes, that means that the hospital has only reported these three. Okay, you won't see a table for any phenotype for which you haven't actually entered an HAI with that pattern. Okay, now let's say we're only interested in looking at the CRE line list. Okay, we don't wanna see all of these other tables, we just want one table for CRE. You can do that using the modify screen. Okay, so on the modify screen, you'll scroll down to the selection criteria grid and you'll set the variable phenotype equal to CRE. Now here there's a code. So in NHSN we have a code for each of the phenotypes. So you're seeing here that it's CRE all underscore HAI. Most of these codes are very intuitive and you'll be able to tell which phenotype um, rep is represented by each code. But if you are confused or if you wanna double check, um, I have resources at the end of the presentation that will link you to a document that tells you which code represents which phenotype. Okay, and one other thing I wanna point out is that CDC is using an updated definition of CRE in these analysis reports. It includes any Klebsiella, E. coli, or Enterobacter that were tested resistant to at least one carbapenem. Okay, now the great thing about this line list, we're looking at only one line list of CRE. NHSN has pulled all three of those different species of bacteria into one line list of CRE. 
So you can see in the red box where I've highlighted the pathogen description, we have Klebsiella, Enterobacter, and E. coli. Okay, so you don't have to go searching for each of the different bacteria that meet a CRE definition. They're all pulled for you here in one line list. And I also want to point out with the red arrow, the event type, we see a mix of event types here. We see bloodstream infections and urinary tract infections. If you want, you can always sort your line list by event type if you want it organized that way. You can filter by one event type or another. But if you don't, by default, it will mix and it will pull all of the different HAIs together. OK, um, so the second option now is the frequency table I'm going to talk about. So by default, this frequency table is showing you the counts of each of the phenotypes by the different event types. OK, so first we're going to look at the column variable. The column variable is event type, so we have one column for bloodstream infections, one column for SSI, one column for UTI. Now the row variables are the different phenotypes. So here we only have four rows, meaning that the hospital has only reported these four resistance profiles. And the one I have highlighted here is for MRSA. So we can see that this facility had two MRSA bloodstream infections, one SSI, and three MRSA urinary tract infections for a total of six. So the point of this frequency table is really to give you a high-level picture of the types of resistant organisms that you're seeing in your facility stratified by the different HAI types. Okay, so we're now going to talk about the rate table. Um, it's called a rate table in NHSN, but what we're really talking about is a percent resistance. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this metric, how it's calculated, and how you can interpret it. Okay, the antimicrobial resistance percentage, it's calculated for each phenotype, and it's similar to a hospital's antibiogram table. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar or have seen an antibiogram table. They're usually produced by your lab, and it will tell you either the percent susceptible or the percent resistant. So the one we're using here is the percent resistant. And it is the percent of specific pathogens that are resistant to specific drugs. Okay, um, so the first blue box is the formula for this percentage. We have the number of resistant organisms divided by the total number of organisms that were tested for susceptibility multiplied by 100. So our example here is for CRE. Our numerator is the number of Enterobacteriaceae that are resistant to carbapenems. And the denominator is the number of Enterobacteriaceae tested for susceptibility to carbapenems. We multiply that by 100. And I'll just say a little bit more about this denominator. If you remember on one of my earlier slides, I showed you where you're entering the susceptibility information, either S, I, R, or N, N being not tested. So if you select N for one of the drugs, that pathogen will not be counted in this proportion or this percentage, okay? Because it was not tested by the lab, we don't know if it was susceptible or resistant because it was not tested. Okay, so here's an example output of our CRE. Um, it's, a rate, it's a rate table in NHSM, but it is really giving you the percent resistance. And I will walk through what each of these numbers represents, um, but I first just want to point out the line of text above the table that says phenotype description equals CRE, that's telling you which phenotype this table is representing, okay? So when you run these rate tables, you may see multiple tables, one for each phenotype. Um, so don't be overwhelmed by it, but just look for that line of text above the table and it will tell you which phenotype. And I do also wanna point out a number of footnotes underneath this table, the footnotes define the phenotype for you, and they tell you some important information about how these numbers are calculated. Okay, so the first number is number isolated. We see a 24 here. So this means that there were 24 Enterobacteriaceae reported to NHSN. It's not saying anything about whether they were tested for susceptibility 
or whether they were resistant. Okay, 24 is not the count of CRE. It's just the count of Enterobacteriaceae reported to NHSM. Okay, the second box, number tested. We see 23. So this means that there were 23 Enterobacteriaceae that were tested by the lab for susceptibility to carbapenems. And this 23 is the denominator of our percentage. Okay, we now have the number resistant, which is six. Six is your count of CRE HAIs. Okay, so six is the number of Enterobacteriaceae that were resistant to carbapenems, and this becomes the numerator of the percentage. Now we have the percent resistance, so if we take six divided by 23, multiplied by 100, we get 26.1%. So this is the percent of Enterobacteriaceae that were tested by the facility and were resistant to carbapenems. And we also include a 95% confidence interval around the percentage. This is just an indication of precision and how precise um, the, the percentage is. Okay, a few more tips about antimicrobial resistant percentages. These percentages are only calculated when your denominator is 20, meaning you've had at least 20 organisms tested for susceptibility to the drugs. Okay, similar to the SIR where we have a minimum precision criteria where you need to have at least one predicted event. Okay, it's the same rationale here. We need the denominator um, to be large enough in order for you to accurately interpret the data and to enforce a minimum precision. To help you with that, these rate tables are only calculated at the quarter level or higher. So that means quarterly, half year, or yearly. And that's to help ensure you have at least 20 isolates in the denominator. If you run these rate tables by quarter and you still notice that you don't have 20 isolates in the denominator, we recommend that you group by a larger time period, either by half year or by year, just to help include more data in the calculation. We do have detailed footnotes beneath the rate table, and these are the ones I pointed out to you earlier. It provides a definition for the phenotype, and it provides um, some of the details that I just discussed. So if you're looking at the table and you're not sure exactly what you're looking at, before you email us, just start by reviewing those footnotes because that could really help you and give you a faster answer. Also, we do have national benchmarks available for resistance for all of these resistant phenotypes. And I will um, show you some screenshots about that report. We have some quick reference guides available. And these quick reference guides tell you how to run each of the three reports I just talked about on how to modify the variables and how to interpret the results. Um, so these guides are available at the link I have here on the screen. And when you go to that link, you'll wanna scroll about halfway down until you see the yellow highlighted tab for detailed guides for specific analysis options. Okay, here is a screenshot from our National Antimicrobial Resistance Report. Um, this is a, um, a national report where we publish the percent resistance for 21 different phenotypes. It includes data from CLABSIs, CAUDIs, VAPs, and SSIs. And we have the percent resistant calculated separately for each of the different HAIs. So the screenshot you're seeing here is from the current version of the published report. So this includes data from 2010. We are working on an updated version that will include data through 2014. And once that is available, it will be posted on our website. So I just wanna um, walk you through how to interpret the data from this report. So the line I have in the blue box, it says Staphylococcus aureus, that's the pathogen. And underneath we have the drug names. Those are in capital letters, abbreviation, ox slash meth is oxicillin slash methicillin. So together, this is the MRSA phenotype. So we have the pathogen and then we have the drugs. We see the total number of staph aureus isolates reported. We see the number and the percent that were tested for susceptibility to these drugs. And then we see the percent resistance, which is 54.6. 
Okay, the National AR report will also provide you with information on the most common pathogens reported to NHSN, and they're ranked within each of the different HAI types. And I do have the link at the bottom of the slide to um, the report that's posted online right now. Okay, if you are interested in reviewing resistance beyond the 11 predefined phenotypes, so perhaps you want, you have a specific pathogen or a specific drug in mind that you're interested in, or if you want to see the full antibiogram of which drugs were susceptible and resistant for each of the pathogens, you will need to use the antibiogram line list. Okay, so this is found in the advanced folder under the subfolder called pathogen level data. And there you'll see the line listing antibiogram and you can click modify in order to select which pathogen and which drugs you're interested in. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through an example of when you would need to use this antibiogram line list. Your hospital pharmacist is interested in the types of resistance patterns seen among HAIs in your facility and would like to know if any pathogens have tested resistant to vancomycin. Because you are all now experts at NHSN analysis, you volunteered to help. Okay, so our goal uh, to help this pharmacist, we want to create a line list showing only those pathogens that tested resistant to vancomycin. Okay, so we're gonna go find our antibiogram line list. We go to the advanced folder, and then pathogen level data, and then you see the line listing for antibiogram. We're going to click modify, and then on the modify screen, you'll find the selection criteria grid, and this is where you will define the phenotype or the resistance that you're interested in seeing. Each of the drugs has an abbreviation in NHSN, as I mentioned before. Vancomycin is VANC, V-A-N-C. You'll know the drugs because they're all in capital letters in NHSN. Most of them should be intuitive, but if not, you can always refer to the NHSN data dictionary to see which drug rep is represented by which code. So in the selection criteria grid here on the screen, I have set vancomycin equal to R. So meaning I want a line list with only those HAIs where vancomycin uh, was, where it was resistant to vancomycin. You can also use the selection criteria grid if you're interested in those that were susceptible or those that were intermediate. Okay, you can really play around with this grid and set different drugs um, to different results in order to get what you need. Okay, so by default, this antibiogram line list will include all of the antibiotic options in NHSN. So right now I have them highlighted in yellow and they're under the available variables column. But normally when you first go to the screen, you will see them on the right side under selected variables. Okay, so there are a lot of codes for the different drugs. We recommend that you remove any of the codes that you don't wanna see. Otherwise, you'll have a very long line list with each column for each of the drugs. So because we are only listed, we are only interested in vancomycin, we have kept vanc as the only drug in our box for selected variables. Okay. Okay, now here is our result. Um, this is the output for a line list of vancomycin resistant HAIs. You'll notice the pathogen description variable. It's pulling any pathogen that was resistant to vancomycin. So here we have three Enterococcus faecalis and one Staph aureus. You can also see the event types are different. The event dates are different because we didn't make any other specifications on that modify screen. If you want, you can consider sorting the line list by HAI type or by pathogen. And if you would like more information on how to do that or on how to do any of these modifications I'm showing you on the line list, you can refer to the guide I have with the link on the slide. Okay, we're now going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the unusual susceptibility alerts in NHSN. Okay, this is a somewhat newer feature of NHSN. It started in the summer of 2014. 
and it highlights the reporting of an epidemiological significant pathogen. The purpose of these alerts is to help prompt infection control interventions if necessary and to assist with data cleaning. These alerts are not at all meant to make anyone feel like they are in trouble. You didn't do anything wrong if you get an alert. All it means is we want to make sure you're aware that you just entered an unusual susceptibility profile. Perhaps double check your data entry, double check the lab report, and make sure that you just know that this is what's being entered. So the user will be notified when an unusual profile is entered for in-plan events only, and you will be notified immediately after saving the event. Okay, it will be a pop-up screen, and I will show you on a few slides what that looks like. Okay, these are the list of the unusual susceptibility profiles, where if you enter an HAI with one of these profiles, you will see the pop-up alert. So it includes things like CRE, highly drug-resistant Pseudomonas, colistin or polymyxin B-resistant Acinetobacter. Um, you can go through the list and you can read more about these definitions on our website. Okay, so here's a screenshot of what this alert will look like. So at the top it says, you have entered a carbapenem-resistant pathogen. This text will change depending on which of the profiles you've entered but you can read through this pop-up screen and you can click on the link. Um, it says details within the screen and it will tell you why you're receiving this alert, which susceptibility you entered that prompted this pop-up screen. Okay, if you are sure that this data ent was entered correctly, you were aware of this, you were expecting this, we just want you to click confirm, which is the first option at the bottom of the screen that will clear the alert and you have no further action to take on this. Okay, if you are surprised when you see this pop up, you wanna double check your data entry, you wanna click cancel. That's the second option, okay? That will take you back to the event screen. You can review everything you've entered and make any necessary changes. Now there is a third option, somewhat in the middle um, between confirm and cancel. If you perhaps you want to check with your lab or you want to check with a colleague about this resistance patterns that you've entered, but you do not want to lose all of the, let's say, CLABSY data that you've already entered, okay? You click OK. That's the third option. Clicking OK will save the event, but it is not a confirmation to NHSN that the susceptibility was correct. You still will need to go in and confirm the susceptibility. Okay, and this is what, if you do click OK, this is um, what the alert will look like on your home screen. So it's where all of the normal NHSN alerts appear. We see this one here says, you have one unusual susceptibility profile. Um, so once you are sure of the data entry and you're ready to confirm the profile, you just need to click on this alert and it will take you to the screen where you can confirm that the profile was correct. Okay, you can also modify the susceptibilities if you later found out you had a data entry error. That will also clear this alert. Okay, and as maybe you would have guessed, we have analysis reports for the unusual susceptibility alerts. We have four different options. We have a line list, a frequency table, a bar chart, and a pie chart. Um, these analysis reports will show you all of the alerts that you've ever received in NHSN um, and those that have been confirmed or are still pending a confirmation from you. And these output options are available for both facilities and groups. Okay, so here I have a screenshot. Uh, I have two screenshots, actually. The first is the line list. Um, we have variables at the end of that line list to tell you whether or not the susceptibility is confirmed or the susceptibility is still pending your confirmation. And then the second screenshot is the frequency table. And this will tell you um, which of the different alerts you've received for each of the different HAI types. Just a reminder that these only apply to 2014 data and forward because that's when we first developed these alerts. Okay, we do have more guidance available on unusual susceptibility alerts if you're interested. We have information and definitions of the phenotypes, 
how to run and interpret the analysis reports, and steps you can take if you do receive one of these alerts. And those are all available at the link I've provided here. Okay, so now we are going to talk, and I'm actually going to show you a little bit of the Patient Safety Atlas. Um, so this was just released yesterday, as Maggie was saying, as part of the Vital Signs release. But before we do that, we're going to start with some background. So historically, the national antimicrobial resistance data from NHSN have been published in the National AR Report. So that's the screenshots that I showed you earlier. Um, recently, with the National Action Plan um, to combat antimicrobial resistant bacteria, there has been an agency goal to increase public availability of antimicrobial resistance data. Um, this is really to help make these data more accessible to different audiences, um, and it's via a website that's user-friendly, has maps and different colors, which I will show you. Okay, so this is an open web-based platform, so it's a public website anyone can get to. It allows review of percent resistance for 31 different phenotypes. The data are summarized at the national, state, and regional level. So we're not showing any one specific hospital's resistance data, but it's been aggregated up to your state, or to your census region, or to the entire nation as a whole. We have interactive and color-coded maps, and we have exportable images and Excel files. Okay, the data included in the atlas so we have pulled all of the pathogen and all of the drug susceptibility data that has been entered as CLABSIs, CAUDIs, or SSIs into the patient safety component of NHSN. I just um, really want to point out here that we are not capturing all resistance in the community. We're not even capturing all the resistance that may be seen in a hospital. It's only the resistance that was reported with an HAI. So it's a subset. Okay, using the patient safety atlas, you can review the percent R for different years, different patient age groups, and different HAI types, either in your state or your region. The first version of the atlas, um, again, which was released yesterday, includes data from 2011 to 2014. We are planning um, each year to add subsequent data to the atlas. And there will be future updates to add additional functionality you can add filters and stratifications and customize some of the reports. Okay, I did want to include a slide here about how you can use all of the data that I've talked to you about today, not just the atlas, but also the resistance reports that I showed you. So first, we recommend that you just run the reports in NHSN and become familiar with the different resistant phenotypes that you're seeing. Okay, you can then explore the patient safety atlas to review the resistance in your state and across the nation. And we also encourage you to share these data with relevant colleagues, like pharmacists, um, any stewardship champions, hospital epidemiologists, et cetera. It might be helpful for you to identify early on in this process if there are any resistance profiles or any bacteria that are of specific concern to your hospital, so the ones that you really should be tracking. If you do um, want some help deciding which ones to track or if you're not sure where to start, we recommend you start with CDC's 2013 AR threat report. Have most of you heard of this report? It came out a few years ago and it identifies um, the serious and the urgent and the concerning resistant profiles that are occurring in the US. So this can kind of give you an idea of where to start looking in your facility. Okay, before I move over onto the Alice, I just um, have a, a list here of different resources to help you. We have the data dictionary. We have different reference guides for the analysis output that I talked about. And the very bottom, I've added the link to the vital signs issue that was released. And from that link, you'll be able to read more about the article, more about the patient safety atlas, as well as our annual HAI progress report. Okay, so give me just a minute to transfer over to the Atlas. Okay. 
Okay, so what you're seeing here is the landing page. The first page you'll see for the Patient Safety Atlas. This is on CDC's website. And um, as you scroll down, you can read about the data that's included. You can read um, where we get the data from, the number of facilities included in the atlas. So this includes acute care hospitals as well as LTACs and ERFs. We have information on the event types, different pathogens included. Um, so you can read through this, and once everyone is familiar with the data, we're going to go ahead and click Go to Map View. Okay, so we're now, this is now the portal for the Atlas. Okay, again, we have some documents over here on the left um, that tells you how to interpret the data, um, how you can use the Atlas. We have a link to a step-by-step -step guide here to help you get started. Okay, so assuming we've read all of that, we again click Go to Map View. Okay, now this part is important. It's the Patient Safety Atlas Disclaimer. We want to make sure that everyone is aware of what these data mean and how you should and should not be interpreting them. We give examples in here about what data are included and what data are not included. So assuming that everyone reads through this and is comfortable with it, you scroll down to the bottom and you click Accept, this green box. Okay, and now here we are at the Patient Safety Atlas. The first thing I want to point out is the orange um, row that's highlighted. That tells you what you're looking at. Okay, so we see there methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, all HAIs, and combined years. So we're looking at all data that um, are from the HAIs in NHSN for MRSA. And um, let's see if we scroll down a little bit, we have the map. So the map is color-coded um, based on the percent resistance. So the states in a darker color have a higher percent resistance than those in a lighter color. You can see down here the legend, percent resistant. Um, there are occasionally some states um, right here, Wyoming, that's shaded with gray. That just means that there was insufficient data for us to calculate the percent resistance. So that means they had less than 20 isolates. Okay, if we hover over a state, so I'm going to pick Georgia because that's where we are, you will get a pop-up box telling you what Georgia's percent resistance is for MRSA. Again, this is for all HAIs and all years. Okay, so you really, you can hover over any state and in this pop-up you'll see the percent resistance. I'm going to take you back up near the top now. Over here on the right, we see national percent resistance in the navy blue box. So 46.4, this is all states combined, the national resistance for MRSA. And then next to that, we show you the numbers that went into that calculation. So the numerator, the number resistant, you can hover your mouse over this little question mark to read more about it. And the denominators is the number of staph aureus tested for susceptibility. Again, you can hover your mouse over the little question mark. As you scroll down here on the right side, we are showing the percent resistance for each year for MRSA. Again, you can hover your mouse over each of the points. And those little whiskers that are above and below the points are the 95% confidence intervals. And as we keep scrolling down here on the right, uh, we have a table where you can actually see the values of the resistance for each year and the values of the confidence intervals. We then have information about this pathogen. You can read about Staph aureus. And then at the bottom, we have some footnotes. Okay, so that is um, really, in a nutshell, the purpose of the atlas, that, um, the different types of graphs and maps that we have available. If you want to change what you're looking at, so if we do not want to look at MRSA anymore, you go to the top and there's this show me bar. It's in blue. And the first drop down are the different phenotypes. So we have 31 different phenotypes you can choose from. Okay, so let's say we want to click on CRE. The map and the figures will all update to CRE. Let me scroll out a little bit. If you want to pick a specific HAI, 
Again, we have a drop down for HAIs, SSI, CAUTI, or CLABSI. And if you want, you can pick the different years if you want to just look at a single year of data. One other thing I want to point out up at the top is this link to the state summary. So this is where you can review all of the data for your state in one place. Okay, so we have Alaska is shown here by default, it's alphabetically. And then we have all of the different phenotypes listed. We have the numerator, the denominator, the percent resistance, and the confidence interval for your state. Okay, again, here's a link to download the table if you want to pull it out of the atlas and look at it on your own. You can do that as well. And then you can either, you can go back to the map view at any time. I'm going to also show you this drop down right here. You can pick a state or a region. So if we want to look at this by regions, see how the map changed a little bit? It's now defining the US Census regions. Again, the same color coding is used. You can hover over a different geographic region to get the percent resistant. And then we have the legend down here at the bottom. Okay, so that's all I'm going to show you on the Patient Safety Atlas. Please feel free to explore it on your own. The links are available on the slides here. And I can now take any questions you may have. Hi. Oh, I don't think it's working. Go ahead. No. Okay. Yep. So um, since we're uh, reporting uh, susceptibility patterns by sensitive, intermediate, and resistant, are we assuming that everyone's using the same breakpoints? That's a very good question. Um, so we don't know. All we have are the category interpretations that you're sending us. Mm -hmm. I think it's very likely that there's differences in breakpoints between the different hospitals and the different labs. And that is a limitation of the atlas. It's included in that disclaimer when you read through and click accept. It will mention that there's differences, not just in breakpoints, but in testing methods, different types of cascade testing that may be going on. Um, so that's all a big limitation when you're interpreting the data. Okay. And on the atlas, um, you were showing the selection of the organisms, and we saw it really briefly, and it named specific organisms with specific drugs, mm -hmm. but it also listed, for example, Lacinetobacter MDR. So what's the definition of MDR? Yep. So MDR stands for multi-drug resistance. Right, but what does it interpret to in terms of drugs? So there's six different classes of drugs that go into that definition. Uh -huh. um, I can show you, we have a link, one of the documents on okay. the atlas that defines exactly which Great. classes of drugs and which testing, which drugs are included. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome.